Hi, and welcome to another presentation from Your Business Tutor. Learning your way, anytime, anywhere. As we have already found out, there are three main types of training that describe where, when, and how training takes place. Those are induction, on the job, and off the job. However, although it is useful to understand these differences, it is important to realise that organisations, especially in the case of on and off the job, do not provide training in such a simple way. Instead, organisations design training courses to meet the specific needs of the staff they are training. So with that, let's explore that point in more detail by looking at the ways organisations train their staff. Okay, so what are we going to learn in today's presentation? Well, first of all, we're going to find out about the different ways in which organisations train their staff. And then we'll go on to explore the advantages and disadvantages of each way of training staff. Okay, let's get started by looking at the first way in which an organisation can train its staff by asking, what is an apprenticeship? An apprenticeship is a programme that trains an employee in a particular trade or industry. For example, apprenticeships are available in areas as varied as plumbing and decorating, all the way through to childcare and software engineering. Given the range of skills that need to be acquired in each of these areas, apprenticeship training can last between one and four years before an employee is fully qualified. During this period, the employee will be trained in two main ways. First, the employee will be trained on the job by an experienced colleague where they'll be shown how to do the job in real life. And second, they will receive off-the-job training at a college where they will learn the theory of their trade and be given further time to practice practical skills used at work. After completing this training, the employee will gain an industry-recognised qualification which will allow them to work in that area. As you might expect, apprenticeships offer a number of advantages. First, the training received is incredibly comprehensive and results in an employee qualifying as an expert in a particular industry. This is good for a business as it ensures there will be enough highly qualified staff available to fill positions when people retire or move on. But also, as apprenticeships are partly funded by the government, they are also a fairly cost-effective way to train staff. Further still, by offering apprenticeships, a business will be able to attract the best talent to their business, but also retain good staff, as they can see the organisation is willing to invest time and money into their development. On the other hand, from an employee's perspective, apprenticeships are good because as well as gaining a formal qualification, they also get paid as they train. Moreover, once they have completed the apprenticeship, they will have a qualification which will allow them to work for any organisation across their industry. Nevertheless, there are a number of disadvantages with apprenticeships. First, from an employer's perspective, although apprenticeship training is partially funded by the government, the business still has to meet a substantial number of costs such as paying the apprentice while at work and at college and ensuring a qualified member of staff is available and capable of training an apprenticeship whilst on the job. This, of course, is a huge commitment as training an apprentice to full qualification can take anywhere up to four years. On the other hand, disadvantages to an employee of an apprenticeship is that there is no guarantee of a permanent job at the end with the company that trained you, meaning the apprentice may feel that their time spent training was a waste. Another issue is that as an apprentice, you can expect that what you will be paid will be significantly lower than a fully qualified employee, meaning earning enough to pay for rent and bills may be a struggle. Okay, Let's now move on to look at what graduate training schemes are. 
A graduate training scheme is a training program that many organisations offer to attract recent university graduates to join their business. The training offered through the program is usually work-based on the job but may also involve off-the-job release to a college or university to undertake professional studies and complete qualifications required for the industry they have entered. Graduate training schemes usually last somewhere between one and three years and provide extensive training in a number of different areas across a whole organisation. Whilst on the scheme, a graduate is usually assigned a mentor to keep an eye on their progress and to act as a sounding board for any issues the graduate may have. So what are the advantages of a graduate training scheme? Well, from a business's perspective, it allows them to attract some of the best talent to their organisation. This is because graduate posts are highly sought after, meaning the business will have a vast range of able people to choose from. More than that though, by getting a graduate straight out of university, a business will be able to mould that person in the ways of their organisation. This will not only make them more effective and committed to the business, but will ensure the organisation has a good supply of highly trained, talented staff to move into senior management positions once they have completed the scheme. On the other hand, from a graduate's perspective, such training schemes are viable as they receive extensive training in a wide range of areas and often achieve a professional qualification at the end. More than that though, Graduate training positions are usually well paid and give an employee a chance to experience different areas in a business before deciding on what area they want to specialise in at a later date. However, graduate training schemes also have a number of disadvantages. For example, to set up, run and organise a graduate training scheme is expensive. Interviewing hundreds of candidates, running assessment centres and creating an extensive training programme over a number of years will cost a lot of money. Now, this cost may be fine if the graduate stays with the business, but if they leave during or soon after completing the scheme, the cost of it may be difficult to justify. Alternatively, from a graduate's perspective, a disadvantage of such a scheme is that should they leave during, soon after or fail to achieve their professional qualification, their contract usually states that they will have to pay back all or a percentage of the training costs. Ok, let's now turn to a similar way of training staff by asking what is a corporate training scheme? A corporate training scheme is a training programme that an organisation creates itself to develop its staff. Usually the training will be delivered through a range of short courses on things as varied as leadership, ICT skills and customer service, which staff can sign up for or which managers can put staff forward for. In most instances, the training will take place within the business and will be delivered by an experienced colleague, but occasionally can involve bringing in external training providers to meet the specific training needs of staff. Ok, let's now find out what the advantages are of corporate training schemes. One of the big benefits is that courses are created which address areas the organisation either wants to improve or excel in. This means the courses will directly support organisational priorities and will make staff more productive in their jobs. Better yet, by offering a range of courses, staff will be more likely to stay with the business as they can see that they are valued and are being developed. From an employee's perspective, a corporate training scheme is valuable because it allows them to develop skills that may result in a promotion or a pay rise. On the other hand, the disadvantages of corporate training schemes is that when staff take part in a course, they will often require a day or two away from their job to complete the training. 
This means work undertaken by the employee may be delayed or that expensive cover staff may need to be brought in. Further still, as the majority of courses are created by staff inside the business, time and money will need to be spent to ensure the courses delivered are well structured and effective. If not, the quality of the courses can be poor and will be badly received by staff. On the other hand, from an employee's perspective, a disadvantage of corporate training courses is that completion of a course does not automatically lead to a pay rise or a promotion or even a formal qualification being gained. Moreover, sometimes staff are expected to undertake such training in their own time over a lunch break or after work in the evening, which bites into their own personal time. Let's now turn to look at what work-based qualifications are. Work-based qualifications are a way in which employees of an organisation can gain formal qualifications through their day-to-day -day job. How this occurs is through a local college working in partnership with an employer to identify how the work undertaken in the business can meet the requirements of a qualification in areas as varied as hospitality, motor vehicle repair and dental nursing. Once the tasks required to meet the qualification are identified, staff can gain the qualification by maintaining a portfolio of evidence and passing on-the-job observations by a qualified assessor. As you might expect, there are a number of advantages of work-based qualifications. First, an organisation gains as staff will be motivated to do a good job as by doing so, they gain a formal qualification. Further still, by offering staff the chance to gain qualifications as they work, they will not only help to attract, but also retain good staff, as they know they are being invested in. More than that though, by working in partnership with a college, a business will be ensuring that the job staff undertake are well designed and in line with modern requirements, which will help to keep them ahead of competitors. And finally, as staff gain a qualification on the job, they are never away from work, meaning expensive cover staff are not required and the flow of work is not disrupted. On the other hand, from an employee's perspective, work-based qualifications give staff the opportunity to gain a formally recognised qualification, which may help them to achieve a promotion, a pay rise or alternatively make it easier for them to move on to another employer. Of course, there are also disadvantages of work-based qualifications. For example, the employer will have to pay the college to register each employee enrolled for the qualification, which could end up being rather expensive. Also, setting up the work-based qualifications can be challenging for a business as the college may insist tasks within a job are altered to meet the qualification standard. On the other hand, from an employee's perspective, work-based qualifications can add an administrative burden to their job, as they have to maintain a portfolio of evidence to prove they are meeting the qualification standard, which can take a considerable amount of time. Okay, let's now turn to our final way in which organisations can develop their staff by asking, what is Continuous Professional Development, CPD? Continuous Professional Development, or CPD, as the name suggests, is ongoing training that takes place throughout an employee's career to ensure they stay abreast with the most up-to-date developments in their chosen career. In general, employees must complete a certain number of hours of CPD training every year to meet their professional obligations. For example, this could be done by undertaking professional reading, attending courses and conferences, or participating in training events. This is all then logged in a CPD record which an employer or professional body sign off annually to confirm completion. The advantages of CPD to an employer is that it encourages staff to stay at the top of their profession by continually improving their skills, which will make them more productive workers. But more than that, 
As employers often invest in CPD training, it shows staff that they are valued by the business, which should motivate them and help to retain good staff. From an employee's perspective, CPD is valuable as it allows them to maintain their professional status, which allows them to continue to practice in their chosen career. More than that though, as an employee can often choose what CPD they complete, they can focus in on areas they want to improve, which should result in them being more committed to their own self-improvement. However, CPD also has disadvantages. For example, a business may have to pay a significant amount of money to put employees on courses that keep them abreast of the most recent developments in their profession. And as these can be off the job courses, employees' output will also be affected. Couple this with the fact that an employer will encounter administrative costs resulting from its responsibility to oversee, discuss and sign off an employee's CPD plan and record, and you can see that such training can be costly. On the other hand, although employers often pay for courses that meet CPD requirements and allow this to happen during the working day, there is also an expectation that some CPD will occur in an employee's own time. Obviously that, combined with the fact that an employee must keep and maintain a CPD record, means that such training can take up an employee's own time, which would obviously be a big disadvantage. Okay, so what did we learn in this presentation? Well, first of all, we found out about the different ways in which organisations train their staff. We then went on to explore the advantages and disadvantages of each of those ways of training staff. As we have seen, there are a huge number of ways in which a business can train their staff. This is incredibly important, as what it shows is that training must be designed effectively if both a business and its staff are to get the most out of it. There is no point delivering training using a one-size-fits-all philosophy, as it just won't work. Training requires to be bespoke and targeted so that the staff receiving it can take the most out of it and then apply it effectively in the organisation they work.